It's time for a revolution. We've seen him in almost every industry. Now it's time to dial into sports, to dial into training, and to be able to measure those tiny little gestures to see how strong you are, how fast you are. Where better to start than in the fighting sports? And that is what we're talking about today in Microsoft Dev Radio. Hi, and welcome to the next episode of Microsoft Dev Radio. I'm Jerry Nixon, and I'm here to talk to you about Hixo. But before we get into that, I've got two people on the, on the call that honestly are going to be some of the most interesting people you've talked to today. I'm starting with, we've got Charles Lambert. He's the lead developer over at Hixo. We're going to talk to him in a second because right here, queued up for you and for me to be able to talk to, is the none other than Steve Xiao, my favorite evangelist, the startup evangelist from Seattle. But Steve, you're not in Seattle right now. I am not in Seattle. I'm in San Francisco today, Jerry. Uh, is there anything in San Francisco? <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the one so, light town. Yeah, so I'm here for a couple of days because uh, very frequently we, we, the evangelists like myself would gather in the city and, and hack on a certain project, a certain uh, technology. So I'm here today and we, ex we are uh, uh, going deep into um, our cognitive services. Today. All cognitive services. Yeah. And cognitive services are awesome to demo to people. Yes. It it's they're so dazzling and I mean it just gets people's like minds blown. It, that's what it is. It blows their mind. And I yeah, think is the, is there one that got, got really famous with the uh, guess your age uh, yeah. PI, right? So it's really fun. What kind of dog are you? I mean, there's just some really great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I love it when you travel because you come out to Denver and we get to talk to all these startups. Of course, you focus on startups. And then I get an opportunity to meet all these awesome startups because they're wanting to talk to you so bad. And I just hang out with you so I can kind of see what it's like. And, uh, and they, I allow you. Yes. And I allow you to tag along. Yes. You allow me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, now, I, I, we've got Charles over in the wing. And before I start talking to Charles, Talk to me just a little bit about Hixo. Um, where, what kind of a company are they? So Hixo is a uh, a Y Combinator uh, a company. Uh, so back at Microsoft, we engage with a, a very selective set of um, of accelerators and co-working spaces that are producing really high quality uh, startups. Okay. And, and and YC being at the top of the list, and uh, and that's how I cross paths with with Charles and, and Hixo. Uh, so they're one of many companies that we we work with. Uh, definitely right at the top because we we uh, we we went quite far together. Now, wh what is Y Combinator? It's a incubator. Yeah. It is a yeah. what do you what's the word? Some people would say incubator. Some would say accelerator. I would say it is interchangeable. But the main concept there is that it's a, a program typically with a defined start and end date. And what you do is you you apply to be part of the program. TechStars is another popular. Uh, accelerator, and in exchange for uh, 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 a seat investment, well, rather put it this way, the the institution like YC or TechStars would give the startup that's accepted a a seat investment, and in exchange, the company will typically give anywhere from four to five to six percent of the company to the institution, and during that three to four months, they would grow the company, and typically that culminates to a demo day where they will stand on stage. And uh, and talk about their product and raise money for the next for, for to bring the, the business to the next level. Yeah, and yeah. and you didn't mention it, but Microsoft is also an incubator. That's right. We have an accelerator. It's called Microsoft Accelerator, and and the concept there is the same. I believe it's f four months instead of three. And the unique thing about Microsoft Accelerator is that we don't uh, take any equity. Uh, we don't take so any percent. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. Yeah. I guess once it you is. have a couple hundred billion dollars in the bank, you might as well just hold off a little bit, I guess, is the uh, idea. Rounding errors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're good, no, no, I'm, I'm being facetious. There are good reasons why we don't. Uh, 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 we chose not to take equity. That's at, right. The company and winning together with the startup was more important than, than owning the company, owning parts of the company. So um, yeah. it's, a, it's a strategic uh, a thing. 
And these organizations are pretty picky. So if you see a company and they have made it into that class, you know they've gone through a lot of vetting and you know the company really has a lot of potential. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's why it's cool to have Hixo here. And uh, Charles, now before we talk about your company, we, before we talk about the solution, let's talk to me a little bit about you. Who are you? <laughs> I'm a computer scientist. So I graduated uh, three years ago from mm. uh, from Laval University back in Canada, Quebec. So uh, I do speak French. <laughs> Is that right? And, uh, yeah. And I was uh, played a lot of football uh, back there. Uh, we, we won national championships there. So I've always been tied to sports. And that's kind of why the, this product uh, was an, uh, of interest to me. And that's why I jumped in the project uh, uh, two years and a half ago. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Now, you tell me just a little bit about Hixo. What, what, what's the company do? Uh, so, we develop uh, punch wearable trackers. So, uh, it, it's for training. So, uh, either for boxing or MMA, they use it as a training tool. So, it counts how many punches they throw, uh, the velocity of their punches. It recognizes also which type of punches. So, either jab, cross, uh, hooks and uppercuts. So it gives them uh, statistics that they never had or they wish they had before uh, so they can improve. So we give them a way to measure and then they can improve. And this yeah. is a device, you would wear this device when you're practicing, not during an actual event, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. As for now, yeah, only when practicing. But uh, back then, at first, when I jumped in the project, uh, it, we were aiming at uh, broadcasting, so displaying stats live uh, during wow. live events. But now this is not the goal, like short term, but maybe later. Yeah, yeah, because there's probably all kinds of regulations and things that you can't have too much stuff around because you could hurt somebody or whatever, right? That's the, yeah. Because because you could hurt somebody, Steve. You'd hate to hurt somebody while you're punching them. That'd be that'd just be awful. Jerry, <laughs> so, Jerry, you may have caught uh, uh, the the fact that um, it's not a coincidence that uh, that Hexo and, and and Microsoft is working because you know me, I I love. That, that space. I've been in MMA as a spectator yeah. <laughs> for, for, I love MMA. And, and when I found out that Hickson was doing something in that, in that, in that field, I'm like, oh, sign me up. This is cool. Nice. Nice. Okay. So I have a device like this. Uh, tell me just a little bit about the hardware for a second, Charles. I want to talk about the software, but I just have curiosity here. Um, where's the battery? Where's the sensor? Is it on your wrist? Is it actually in the, in your hand? Where do you put it? So yeah, I have it right here. So ah. it comes in that little box. We got it there. So this is uh, this is it. So this is our charging station with two bulb devices in. So it's as small as that. So maybe if you could see with my end. Oh so yeah. So once you put it, so you know, uh, boxers and uh, many fighters they wrap their wrist. So when they're almost done wrapping uh, their wrist, they just put it in, finish wrapping it up, and now now it's now it's in and. And it's, it's just the way they, they, they set it up right now. Uh, maybe eventually, you know, it's going to come in with uh, some gloves, like with, with a little uh, pocket that you could put it in. But as for now, it's, uh, they put it in their wraps. Uh, so basically, yeah. So uh, it communicates uh, via Bluetooth to our mobile application. Okay. Not to the phone that's in their pocket, but to a Bluetooth receiver that's somewhere outside. Uh, uh, not to a Bluetooth receiver of your phone. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, how, what's the practical way, place to put a phone while while you're uh, in a fight? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, well they, they basically, they just leave it uh, next to to where they train, or because the thing yeah. is, uh, the con the communication, the connection doesn't need to be uh, uh, live every time. So if ever you lose the connection, uh, punches are still stored on the device, and once okay. you get back in range, then uh, everything is gonna sync up. So you don't necessarily okay. need to have your phone while you train. Okay. Uh, Steve, I get it. I totally get it. And man, we stuff like this is everywhere. We just we had a, an episode a handful of uh, weeks ago where we did the same thing for golf, and they had all the sensors up and down the golf club and the way you're going. It seems like the precision of of sports is off the charts right now. Isn't it crazy? Absolutely. It's. I, I think data is, and the analysis of data, uh, extracting information out of data. Is is where the money is. Yeah, and it, it's uh, and now that IoT is so small, so cheap, so easy, so everything, right? It's really just a matter of just throwing a dart at 
uh, whatever field it is. If it's going to be golf and now it's going to be, you know, fighting and, you know, what's next? Everything can be improved. All these tiny little things that used to be immeasurable, right? You couldn't really, you'd have somebody say, yes, that was an upper, and he's keeping track on a notepad, but he doesn't give you velocity and all of these things that all of a sudden you have a massive amount of things. You could start processing that in some sort of ML and suddenly you can come up with, like real statistics that have nothing to do with what's observable, right? You can, you, really, it's about the data and the, the trending of the data. It's incredible. What, what's the special part of uh, Hixo? What was the problem that you went into? Uh, some problems. We went through a lot of problems. But uh, uh, at, at first, we were aiming at broadcasting. So obviously, it was, uh, it was a tough way to start it because they, they, they don't want uh, our technology unless it's like bulletproof you know there's ah, no yeah. problems or anything it needs to be perfect so as for now uh while training maybe they're more uh, they're more likely to you know they, they, they feel it's all right if there's uh, some errors at some points and we were working on uh, improving everything so for example uh, uh, there, it's very difficult to recognize to, to make the difference between a hook and a hopper cut for many reasons and even a coach sometimes has, has a hard time telling you if it, whether it was a, a hook or a cut so imagine oh, like yeah. trying to try to compute that yeah uh, so that's one of the difficulties uh, yeah and also like uh, it's never been done before so we, we've made it all up uh, ourselves with a small team small budget so obviously uh, there's been some uh, it's been a tough time but we made it <laughs> <laughs> nice, uh, Steve. What's what's impressive here? What what it, when you step back and you're like, wow, Hixo really has the. What what do you what do you follow that with? Uh, a, a lot of things. The first thing in my mind, uh, other than the the revolutionizing the sport and galvanizing the sport with science, uh, mm -hmm. collecting data, uh, I was pretty excited about what it could do outside of uh, of uh, combat sport uh, mm. because th this is. Um, uh, it, it wouldn't take you more than five minutes to figure out that, my God, if these guys can collect a sophisticated movement like, like a, a punch, uh, they, can, they can collect everything else uh, in many types of sports and beyond sports as well. So it's, 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 uh, the, 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 they, they have taken on a, a very uh, – uh, they've opened up a little, you know, a little bottle with lightning in it, and right now they, they, it's the, the sky's the limit, so to speak. It's so much they could do. Amazing. Yeah. Now, Steve, tell me, how does Microsoft play into this picture? Awesome. So, um, we when we first met Hixo, they have a fantastic product, and 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 just for uh, the folks who will be checking out their website, the we have a sensor that's sending data to a uh, a phone, uh, to an iOS device. Uh, uh, Charles, does it take an I iPad? It does iPad too. Uh, right? uh, yes, and Android too, right now. And Android as well. Yeah, version. Um, and that was a really fantastic part because imagine if you are a fight, if you are a trainer, you are a fighter, and you have these sensors in your glove and you're boxing. And, and by the way, it's really tough to box because acid will build up in your muscle and your hands get really heavy. And so these sensors can tell you how well you're still performing. So anyway, so the, these guys are punching, and the data is being sent to the phone, and in real time they can see uh, uh, their performance uh, as reported by the Hixo sensor. Um, and, and that was really fantastic. And, and when Charles and I got together and, and talked about their technical roadmap, we found, I found out that the, the, the next big move was to um, send the data to the cloud. So now you can have, say, a team of boxes just going at it simultaneously, or maybe they're sparring or something, and have the data be streamed to the one central place and be viewed by a mm. trainer, or maybe for historical reasons, just to compare it to a, a real boxer, you know, uh, and, and that was the next step. And we realized that we could actually uh, utilize a lot of Azure for that. So we, we got together in mm. uh, a couple of months back in uh, right here where I sit in San Francisco and started uh, exploring the various um, ways that we can use Azure to send the data from the phone to the cloud and have the cloud organize the data and, and slip it up. And obviously, we, we are looking at a scenario where we want to scale. So it's not like we can just uh, send one data point every minute. We're talking about a lot of data points at any given second times the number of boxes that you have going on at the same time. 
right? Right. We explore things like Event Hub. We did stream analytics, and we played Power BI, and sort of explore the various uh, uh, stack in Azure. And there were so many to choose from. Mm. And so uh, today, Charles and I continue to, to work and refine a, a, a the best approach for them uh, to get all that data to the cloud uh, on Azure. Cool. Just when you think it's awesome, there's potential to be super awesome. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Charles, what do fighters think about this when you show it to them? <laughs> they don't believe it will hit. It will work. So they're like, no, nah, I'm sure it won't. It doesn't work. And now that we've shipped, a lot of people are like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wish I had that like years ago when I was younger and getting <laughs> trying to be a pro or something like that. So they're really amazed and. Uh, we feel we have uh, mostly very good comments about the product. And, yeah, yeah, and it is small, and it is out of the way, and I'll bet once you're taped up, you don't even know you've got it, right? I mean, it's it's just one of those things exactly. that happens to be there as well. And so, uh, what do coaches say? Like now, you know, our fighters are—they don't believe it. They love mm -hmm. it. What what's a what's a coach do with this sort of thing? Uh, uh, well, for them, like they could have maybe at, at some point before that count some punches with clickers or something like that, but now it's way faster. They just don't need to worry about that, just worry about techniques and giving comments uh, to improve their fighters, and then after they can look at the data. And it's also a big uh, motivation. Uh, it helps them motivate their fighters, and that's probably the, the first comments that we get is like, mm. not, now people just don't want to stop training. They're, they're like... Wow. So they, they train for hours and yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, is there what do you anticipate will happen next? I mean, are you going to are are fighters seeing results like things that they couldn't see before? Are they are they improving in a way that maybe you didn't expect? Uh, yeah, what, uh, what we've seen as for now, it's like uh, uh, more motivation. Uh, they're trying mm -hmm. to improve their speed, so average speed over a session. Uh, they're <laughs> yeah. really curious about uh, one metric that we have is uh, uh, intensity score. So it's based off uh, the number of punches that you throw and at what speed and uh, uh, all that sort of, sort of system like that. So they're curious about it. They want to know more. Uh, and uh, they want to compete also, so now people are starting comparing their results, and that's something that we we don't we don't uh, we don't have any platform or kind of uh, way for people right now to compare their results apart from you know sharing it on Facebook or something like that. Sure. But they're doing it still. They they find a way to do it, and that's that might be something uh, would like to to add to to the product. Sure. Sure. Charles, tell me a little bit about the about the technology. What's the what's the software and hardware that's going on here? Mm -hmm. uh, so in here we have uh, a gyroscope, it helps us, uh, well accelerometer and gyroscope, so the gyro is uh, mostly to, to recognize our hooks, so that goes up and down, uh, it helps us recognize that type of punches, uh, we have a Bluetooth chip, obviously a battery, uh, yeah. otherwise there's a, our firmware, so uh, the way we program, uh, so uh, I don't think I told you already, but uh, like our punch recognition or the, how we measure the velocity, it's all on chip. It's nothing done oh, really? on, on, on the app or anything. So it's like, uh, uh, yeah. So and and also, uh, once we improve those algorithms, uh, we're able to update every device uh, the, the, that's on the field, like without without people noticing or most like they just. Here's an update, and they click like install, install. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, on the device, um, what's the software that you you have? What, what language is it written in? Uh, it's in C, and uh, our firmware is in C. Otherwise, yeah. uh, uh, our app is a, uh, it, it used to be Objective C. Now it's all in Swift. And now it's on on the on the phone side. Yeah, on the phone side. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. As cool. Long, uh, yeah. So. Uh, the uh, <laughs> it, uh, right in a right in a how do you how do you start to calculate uh, something as compl as complicated as a gesture like how do you bring those things together what do, what do you do I mean it seems like it could be almost overwhelming to say you know now I know the direction now I know the speed how does that translate into an uppercut uh, yeah well it's a bunch of training you know we we kind of train our algorithms to recognize certain movements to filter others so we don't want you know sometimes boxers will go and do some rounds on the bag and then they'll jump in jacks and then come back to the bag so we don't want to count 
those jumping jacks. So it's kind of some filters that we put in, uh, make sure we train our, alg our, our algorithms to recognize which types of movements. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there, but I, w I wouldn't go deeper because uh, that's pretty much where our secret sauce is. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me a well, let me ask you, Steve. Steve, uh, there's a developer watching this. There's a handful of developers watching this, and they've had the same idea, right? They, theirs is about like training poodles or, or whatever. It's, you know, it's slightly different. Um, how approachable is something like this, Steve? How approachable in terms of pulling out a, the, tech, the tech? Yeah. I would say, you know, in the startup world, you'll learn very quickly that ideas are cheap. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can have like 10,000 ideas, you know, written on the back of an envelope or a napkin, you know, and but execution is hard. Uh, bring, it, bring it from, from paper to, to actual product is super hard. Bring, uh, and and for, the, for this space, for this topic, we're talking about IoT. So bringing, bringing an idea to a proof of concept, a prototype, that part could be fairly easy, but then from the, from the POC, from the prototype to go to market, which these guys are, have, have done, is super hard. You can ask these guys, there's, mm. there's rounds and rounds. of. It's not shipping software where you just edit a line of code and just push F5 or you know, publish in, in Azure and then you're done. It, it's not that easy. Uh, and shipping hardware is, is tough. And so there's an easy part, proving yeah. the concept, slapping it on a little Raspberry Pi and strapping the Raspberry Pi on your wrist. <laughs> yeah, right, right. The part is easy. But these guys have, have uh, 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 taken it one step, a few more steps further and productizing it. Now, that is very difficult. It's yeah, it, out of discipline. And, and it's more than just fabrication, right? I mean, you've got to, especially if you think, you've got to make it beautiful. You've got, and because the, you know, the bar for, a, just the, when he was showing us the device, <laughs> opening the box, just that opening experience, the bar is so high for already, just that. You haven't even gotten to the hardware yet. And they have yeah. extra things that you and I haven't even thought about. You know, you you and I would create our poodle tools, and we wouldn't think, well, can it? What if what if somebody hits it? Like, what if it actually takes a direct? You know, is going to break now? Does it get hot when it starts to be used? How big is the battery? How long does it last? All of these things are more complicated than you think. But if I separate the software from the hardware, and I go to like just round one where it's a, where it is a. I don't want to strap a Raspberry Pi to my wrist, but where it's, you know, you're solving this with cheap hardware, a developer really can bring an idea to bear and start tempting people who might be able to join with them, be able to fund that idea, or kind of see it to the next level. It, that part is amazingly approachable, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I, I totally agree. I mean, go, go to a, a, a electronic store, pick up a Raspberry Pi for 35 bucks. You can yeah. slap Windows 10 on it, and you can start whipping up a pretty convincing prototype and a lot of people are doing that in the startup world they what they do is they, they do that and then they get a, a design to help them conceptualize how the finished product will look like and then they put it on Kickstarter and and that's how and that's how a lot of uh, hardware companies have have have, have have grown sure sure that's right uh, Charles tell me tell me something about the, a device like this um, when will it be available uh, it is available right now. We just shipped, we just shipped our first batch, uh, like uh, what is it, three weeks ago or something. Uh, but now, if you want to get it, it's uh, you would kind of pre-order for the next batch that should be ready uh, around uh, April. Okay, uh, that's it is that's soon. That's really soon. Yeah. yeah, that's really soon. And is is there a way to update the chip, or uh, how do you how do you flash upgrades? Uh, you know, I just bought round one. I love it, um, but uh, you just came up with something awesome and made it so that the super duper uppercut can be detected. Uh, is there a way mm -hmm. that the that you can flash the device, or how do you how do you have an upgrade path? Yeah, uh, the, that's the way we do it. Like remotely, the, you would kind of get a notification on your app uh, saying that uh, you should connect your device now. There's an update, and then mm -hmm. it takes like uh, one or two minutes to update, and then you're all set. You. And you, so you don't need to buy a new hardware for that. Uh, so nice. That's, that's something pretty cool for users. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's really cool. Kind of like how a game controller works on an Xbox or something, where all of a sudden you're yeah. flashing an update to the controller. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you, do you, uh, do you wear them around? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> not yet. Because <laughs> I would need to wear my wraps. So, <laughs> since we don't have a, like, a, uh, it's not a watch yet. So, or if ever it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool. Um, it sounds like this is a, a pretty sweet device. If uh, somebody's like, I have to have one, where do you send them? Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, Hixo.com, and Hixo is H-Y-K-S-O. H-Y-K-S-O dot com. They can go get it. Pre-order basically the second batch that's coming in April. And uh, awesome. That is super awesome. Steve, I don't know how you do it, but you find the coolest startups that you get to talk to. <laughs> you, must, uh, you must just have that magnetism, that certain something that only Steve can, can have in finding companies like Hixo. What's the, uh, what, what, do you, what do you see the next big revolution being, Steve? Is it going to be all IoT or is it, is it going to be machine learning or some sort of mix? What's the, you talk to so many startups. What's the trend today? I, I, uh, number one, yes, I do have that magnetism. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two, uh, two, I don't know. I mean, if I have an eight ball that I can use to look into what's the next hottest thing I I, 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 I will be I won't be at Microsoft anymore. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out there placing bets on these companies. But they, they, these guys continue to amaze us. It's um, we we um, just when you think you you've seen the next big thing, another one comes along. Right. The the last company that that caused me to go to 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 lose you know, uh, my my breath is. Um, a company in Seattle, uh, a Techstar Seattle, that is helping people uh, uh, save and preserve their stem cells. Huh. And so for a fixed amount of cost, they, they save their stem cells, and then for a, a, a monthly uh, subscription, they, they get to, you get to uh, keep that stem cell in, in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. And, and if and when you need it, it's there. And it's, it's, uh, it's freaking amazing. And, and then when I thought I was... I'm amazed, and and I, I I meet another one, you know, and another one, another one. So it's so hard to, to tell what's the next big thing. Maybe it's fintech be, because of blockchain. Maybe it's IoT because things are getting cheaper and smaller and better. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? Yeah, uh, man, I was hoping you were going to say space travel. Oh, I was hoping space travel. Yes, <laughs> space travel. Yes, beat <laughs> me up. Oh my gosh, it is it is awesome. I tell you what, we we interview these these uh, these teams, and, and I get so jealous. Sometimes I, my reaction is, "Man, why didn't I do that? That's so obvious. I should do that." You know what I mean? And uh, other times I'm like, "I don't know how you're ever going to actually I would, do." This. I would this say is... that a, I would say that's a very mild response. Every time I see these guys do a demo day, and they, and my reaction is is like, ah, like f, you know, darn it, I should have done that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mine your mine your uh, whatever you're great at, and think about like like you. Everybody's got their thing that they're into, and I'm a particularly great at poodles. Let's say why why am I not thinking about solving a problem with what's poodles? With, with what's with you and poodles? I, you know, I don't even have a poodle. I don't even have a dog. I don't know. It was just the go-to example. Steve, <laughs> I love talking about startups. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Charles. Dude, congratulations! It looks like you have an awesome product, man. You've done a great Thank job. You. Yeah, yeah, it's totally great. Um, this has been a great show. Thanks for talking to us today, Charles. It was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you bet. Have a great day, guys.